Hello and welcome to And All Shall Be Well. My name is Megan Rohr and I'm your host. Today's conversation with Sophia is a conversation about the difficulties of living through war and how to try to move forward in the world. It's not a story of solving everything. It's a story of being a work in progress and trying to figure out what you want to do next, even when you are still struggling and having a hard time. Sophia is someone who has accomplished really big, bold things in the world, from planning marches with over 80,000 people in attendance to advocating for people across San Francisco and across the world to have better, safer ways of being in the world. And none of that comes with the kind of boldness or uh, self grandizement that you might expect from someone who has accomplished so much in their life. In fact, it comes from this desire to make sure that all people are well. In part, that is the, the lingering ways that witnessing difficult things in our childhood sticks with us and maybe drives some of us to work as hard as we can, as often as we can. So Sophia's story is a relatable story, even if you haven't lived through war, even if you haven't had an immigration experience like she has, because it's a story of continuing to keep trying, even though the world doesn't get any easier. Sophia is someone who is incredibly giving and serves as a mentor in the world. And I think you will experience a taste of her heart in the conversation that we have together. All of her political views might not be the same political views that you have, but I hope that it reminds you that wellness is a work in progress just as much as we are people trying to make the best from the lived experiences and the life circumstances that we have been dealt. So take a listen to Sophia. Hi, um, hi Megan, thank you so much for having me on. My name is Sophia Andari. I use pronouns she, her, and hers. Uh, I'm a consultant, I'm an activist, community leader. Um, I'm the vice president of the Commission on the Status of Women of the city and county of San Francisco. Also a co-founder of Women's March San Francisco. Um, I sit on the board of directors of Alliance for Girls. Those are kind of some of my nonprofit, um, non-paid work that I do, uh, activism work that I do. For my paid job, I am a consultant currently. and I mainly do, uh, I mainly consult for business systems, SAP and EDI. I won't get into that because that's a little too technical. My mom calls it, I do computers. So we'll just stick to that. And are there, are there any other intersections about who you are, where you've lived, how you've been in the world that you think sharing off the top would be helpful for people to know about you? Yeah, absolutely. I am a Lebanese American. Um, I was born in the US. I did live in Lebanon um, from the time I was three until I was eight. And I lived in Lebanon uh, during the Civil War. Um, So I got to experience war um, as a child, as a civilian. Um, And that was It was a very interesting time because at that point, people had been living through the war for 10 years. um, And you'd be amazed at how things can be normal and not the same time. It was a very interesting time for me. Um, Outside of that, I am queer. I um, am a woman of color, right? I, I call myself an intersectional feminist. Um, I'm an aunt to a very, very sweet autistic um, boy, my nephew, uh, and I feel like that has kind of opened my eyes as well to a lot of to a lot of things that I I, I don't think I knew um, 
much about it until you kind of have that lived person, right, that you love so much, um, that sees the world differently, that interacts with the world differently. It kind of opens your eyes about how difficult this world is um, for people that have um, that have differences, right? Different ne- neurological differences. Uh, he's the biggest sweetheart, though. I like he keeps me sane. I'm gonna be real. He really does. Like when I see him, it is when I am mostly kind of living in the moment. I think that's one of the only times that I feel like I live in the moment is when I'm hanging out with him. Um, yeah, outside of that, I feel like those are kind of my intersecting identities. Um, I'm first generation um, American. I was the first to go to um, college in my family. Um, I also lived in France. I studied there. I also worked there. Um, So I got to, I got the privilege and honor to kind of travel all around and just kind of experience the world um, in different countries and that really does open up your eyes to educates you a little bit more um, to what's out there and to a lot of uh, truth and and, and lies um, that I think until you experience for yourself, you don't know. Yeah. And my, my interactions with you are, are typically um, we find ourselves in the same space in the same time when we're doing kind of community organizing, organizing and activism work boots on the streets, marching, marches with more than 40,000 people. You're probably one of the organizers behind it. Um, And, um, but the other thing that like, that I, I, when I think of you, I sort of think of is that like, I personally am a pacifist, like war is something that I am against. And, and that's not like a simplistic idea of let's just not have them, but I like, let's give everyone the peace and the safety and the security and the healing that we need for everyone to have their own sense of nationhood and um, liberation. Right. You are someone who is very sensitive to when there are wars that are happening in the world because of your own personal lived experience. And I always appreciate having conversations with you because I feel like you remind me not only of the like, place where I have my moral compass, but you have sort of this grounding to it of like really fiercely believing that no human being of any age should live through that kind of situation. And so I I appreciate that about you. And I just wonder in a time like now when there's wars in various places, some of which get more or less headlines, how do you, how do you care for yourself living in a space where sometimes people understand deeply what you have known and sometimes people don't get it at all. Yeah. The, the, the sad reality is most people don't get it. it. Even, even if you can see it in front of your eyes, right through social media, until you've been in a war as a civilian, as a child, um, you, you really don't, you, you, you can't comprehend how, evil it is and it it is truly evil war is evil the only people that are impacted by war uh are civilians uh mainly mainly women and children um those are those are the people that suffer the most right um and and for me growing up in that and and just kind of never understanding why um, how, how easily people can be manipulated into a, also going into war or into allowing it or into just kind of turning a blind eye. Like this isn't impacting us. It's far away. Um, it, it Growing up, I've always struggled with that. Um, it, it, it's hurt me um, mentally, right? And I feel like I, I have PTSD and I know I have PTSD. It's not that bad compared to others um, that have lived through war because for me, I was able to leave it, right? From, I left at the age of eight, but um, with the PTSD, whenever we have the blue angels, which I call the devils uh, in the city, I, um, 
I get attacks, I get panic attacks, I get anxiety attacks uh, because of the sound. That sound legitimately reminds me of being in Lebanon, being in a bomb shelter, hearing that sound. And the next sound that you hear is a whistle. And that is the bomb coming down before you hear the blast. You know, and that that sound of those 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 angels um, is exactly what you hear. So it's it, it's it's a struggle. It's very very. I'm not gonna lie. I am not in the best place um, since the genocide started on the Palestinian people. I. It's been hard. First of all, Palestinians are basically cousins. I mean, they really are. Like, I don't think people realize that the, the Levantine region, right? You have Lebanon, you have Palestine, you have Jordan, uh, you have Syria. We're pretty much family. Um, they're also bombing and putting phosphorus um, into Lebanon. And I've already had friends that have been impacted. Their houses have been bombed. This is in southern Lebanon, Lebanon have been bombed. Uh, and there's people that have been died. A lot of mostly innocent civilians have, have been killed. Um, and majority of civilians have been killed in Palestine. It's very, 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 very hard to see this and 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 not cry almost every night. Um, I'm nonstop on my social media. I'm sharing out as much as I can. Um, and it just, it gets to a point where it, it is, I don't know how else to describe it, but it's just physically and mentally draining. Um, and I'm not even living it, right? And and um, I can't even, I, I can imagine, but again, the extent that I survived for my war wasn't as bad as what we're seeing now. What we're seeing now, what I think has happened in the last 90 days is probably the five years in Lebanon that I lived. Right. Um, so it's it, it just imagine it condensed to just that short of a period and just seeing all these children that have futures. Um, their futures are gone, you know, and it's hard because I know that for me, I was very lucky. Um, I was a U.S. citizen, so I was able to leave for right? my family. They're, they're citizens. We were able to leave Lebanon. We were able to go to L.A. and it. You know, I was able to have the education and, and be, be be able to be able to be on this podcast, right, and be able to do all the things that I've done. Um, what one of the ways for me that the way I I have to kind of for me to be okay mentally is I need to get involved. If I don't get involved, I lose it. I, I literally feel helpless. I feel hopeless. Um, I feel um, I, I feel wrong. I, I don't feel like a complete person if I'm not trying to do what I can to help. Right? I'm not there. Right? But I have privileges. I have you know a voice. Um, I I. I'm a very good organizer, as you know. I think that's one of the things that we both have in common, that's for sure. Um, you know, I'm good at mobilizing, I'm, I'm good at showing up, um, and I try my best to get others to show up as well. So that is one of my ways right now that I have been trying to stay mentally sane, um, is by, by getting involved, by making sure that I'm showing up to protests, um, that I'm screaming uh, off the top of my lungs, out of the top of my lungs, you know, um, at, at these marches and these protests that I am showing up. Um, I just spoke <clears throat> at the, um, the city hall, right? The, the, the board of supervisors, they have a resolution that they're gonna be voting on Tuesday. Um, you know, calling for um, a ceasefire, right, um, in 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 uh, in Palestine, and a lot of people they're like, well, that really doesn't do anything. You'd be surprised, right? I I think one of the biggest things is showing up and actually vocalizing and educating folks um, is very important, and that also helps me with my mental health. It helps me 
keep going. It helps me get out of depression a lot of times. It helps me stay just stay afloat because a lot of times just looking at all of this destruction um you know with what's happening in palestine but also a lot with what's happening around the world with what's happening in sudan with what's happening in congo um there's so so many places right and it's depending on the the political climate and what the gains are or what the losses are for the u.s is when you hear about it Right. If if it's not such a huge impact uh, financially, um, sadly, to the U.S., um, then we, we don't hear m- much about a lot of what's happening in the world. But I think one of the most important ways is by doing something. Uh, it can be any way. You don't have to go to protests. You can write letters. Some people are really great at calling um calling politicians and yelling at them and being like, hey, do this. You know, if you want me to support you and give you money, if you want me to reelect you, do the right thing and do your damn job because um, it's, it's important. So, I mean, it's a, it's a hard one. It It's just, it's really hard right now. I, I, I know, and I, I told you this when you asked me to be on this podcast. I'm like, I don't know that I'm the best person right now to talk about wellness and mental health because I'm not in the best place. Um, but I'm also, I, I keep going and and uh, trying my best to, you know, to to be there. And that's the whole thing, right? Like, like I'm, from the trans committee, community, I know for sure that some days wellness is just staying alive until tomorrow, right? And we're in the time of year where the world, the commercials, wants to tell us that wellness is like putting a ring on somebody's finger or it's like getting a a gym membership. It's like all this stuff that isn't necessarily how we identify in the world. Um, Although with all that marching, there's a there's a kind of in shape that you got to be to go up San Francisco Hills while you're marching, right? Um, or, or San Francisco's smart enough to avoid where the hills are. And well, so we mostly did the flat one, so that's what's yeah. okay. <laughs> But I just I feel like what the kind of wellness that you embody is like the you're amplifying the voices of people who feel like they don't have a voice or get their bodily choices taken away yeah. right whether it's whether it's in a war that is a military war or a body centered war or yeah. um the ways that that racism affect the powers and privileges that people have in our world i feel like what you do is not just like you're not marching because you want to be on the picture of a magazine right like you're not you and know, you know i avoided that most of the time i i, I did not Wanted to I know. Do. Most of the social, most of the media, I would try to push it on others to do, even though I was the the lead, right? Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Because but I, I feel like what you're doing is you are multiplying yourself. Like right now, the work that you're doing is supporting the little Sophias that are in in Gaza, or the little Sophias yeah. that are in the Congo, or the little Sophias that are like trying to figure out what kind of choices they're going to make uh, with how they're going to live in their reproductive lives. Like I, and I, I witnessed it a lot with the work with the women's March here in San Francisco is you were not content just to plan a March, which would have been hard enough. Yeah. You were like, I'm going to get as many women in this room as possible to teach them how to plan a March like this so that every issue gets to have a March. I think and so, like yeah. that for me is wellness, being able to like make it not about yourself, but to still be working on a solution in the world. Oh, that's, that's my kind of wellness. That was, right? And I appreciate you saying that because that was my, my goal from the beginning is I did not, I wanted it to be a form of mentorship. I wanted it to be a form of um, each individual feeling self uh, empowered because I wasn't like that for a long time. Right. I think, I've always been a leader, but I've always kind of been hesitant or more on the sideline. Um, 
you know, at, at, even when I was in college protesting the war, uh, knowing that it was wrong and it was a false flag, uh, right? And, and trying to explain to people just the politics of overall of everything and why are we going into Iraq when they had nothing to do with 9-11. Um, you know, it, it's, it kind of really frustrates. Um, um, it's very, very frustrating, but, you know, staying vocal is very important. And the biggest thing is I wish more people would realize how much power they have. And if they just do it, right? A lot of people, they're like, well, I don't, I don't know how to do it. Did, did I know how to do it? Did, remember? Did, we didn't know half of the hell of what the hell we were doing. We figured it out. We figured it out and you'd be amazed. You can figure out a lot of things, especially this day and age with, so, with, the, with Google, social media, right? You have the internet, okay? Like, come on, there's so much stuff. You can figure it out. Um, but I really think that a lot of people that are in a bad place, um, you know, sometimes you, you do have to take care of yourself. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, I, my health has been like a roller coaster. Um, I've had multiple surgeries, so I, 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 physical health is very, very important as well, because if you're not healthy, you can't help anybody else out as well. But, but I, I really wish people would start realizing that a lot of times to get out of a bad place, you need to help somebody else. It's, it, you need to kind of step away from yourself just for a little bit. And, and really, really try to help somebody else, especially when you have more privilege than somebody else, or especially if you have, um, you, you know, you, you have more resources um, or you have whatever, like I, people can get involved in so many different ways. And it's very, very sad sometimes to see that they don't see that and they don't realize that, especially for folks in the U.S., we have a lot more than most um, and, and starting to really just understand that and, 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 and realize that, yeah, you, you, you know, I, I don't want to downplay there's, there's issues. We have a lot of issues in this country for sure, but um, you know, and, and a lot of people can be in a bad place, but s sometimes what, what you're going through is minor um, compared to the overall picture and, and work through it, figure out how to get yourself into a better place, especially for people dealing with depression. Um, but a lot of times the best way to do it is by bringing up other folks. Um, and, and really, th that really does help you. It helped me a lot personally. I, I know that for sure. Uh, you know, outside of that, I still, I, I'm trying to get healthy. So I've been exercising a lot more that that helps. Also, I know I'm one of those that I've always been like, yeah, I do marches, but I have, I have been lazy in the past quite a bit. And, and because I've had a lot of health issues, I had back surgery. So I wasn't able to move even during the marches a couple of times. I, you know, my, my back would spasm and I could barely move sometimes. Um, but even through all of that, I, I did find that taking time for myself and just starting to say no to more things that that really just don't make sense. Like, I, oh, you guys can find somebody else to do this, you know? Like, you can do it yourself. I need to kind of take care of me a little bit more or just prioritize what's, what's a little more important right now. Because, uh, you know, when people are coming to you, everything is important, right? But if you have like 50 people coming to you and they're all saying each one is important, that's, that's, not, that's not the case, at least not now for me looking at it. Um, but exercising has been really helpful. I really love to go to Academy of Science. That's my favorite place. Uh, I live in the Richmond district, so I go there quite often um, and just walk around, put my headphones on. It, I sometimes take a friend. If not, I go by myself, walk around, put headphones. Um, I like to be around animals um, and, and just, just the outdoors as well. Um, I'm lucky I live very close to Land's End, so I can go on those trails. So there is a th there are ways that I try to take care of myself in, in, in that sense. And sometimes you have to kind of just be like, okay, I need to step away. Today, I'm just going to step away and I'm going to go for a hike tomorrow. I'm going to go for a hike. I'm going to, you know, go get my favorite food at this place. I'm going to see some friends at night. 
And then tomorrow I'm, I'm back, I'm back to, okay, we got meetings. Uh, there's, you know, I, I gotta be, uh, at a protest. Okay. Then we're going to do that. So it's just kind of like making sure I just, I, I, I try to keep things balanced, um, is important. Um, but, but it really is about just showing up for people that are more marginalized than you. I, I think that is like the most important and best thing that you can do. Well, and I like, that's one of my favorite things about you, but also it's like, because I know you're going to show up for people and you're good at vetting the people you're going to show up for, right? Like you get a lot of phone calls of people who want you to raise money for their political campaign, but the ones that you say yes to, I'm like, okay, that person, I'm yeah. going gonna, I'm gonna to show for that person. But I and feel like- I'm being a lot more critical than I ever have been. I've had to no. like unendorse people or unsupport people that are just not showing up for- my community or for LGBTQ plus community or, you know, or, or just not showing up uh, by action because w words are meaningless half the time. If you're not showing up by action or if, or if you're not willing to be brave, um, I don't, I don't want, I don't want more cowards in office. We have too many already. I don't want any more. Yeah. But whenever I get a call or a text from you and you're like, <laughs> There's this march. I don't know anything about those people, but I'll be there. And I'm like, I'm in. I'll yeah, bring, I love I'll that. Bring That's one of the reasons I always ask you, Meg, is because I know that um, I know that you're gonna show up, and you show up for a community, um, yeah. and you also know what the heck you're doing when we're doing safety, because <laughs> that's always hard. Uh, especially safety for the marches, right? Like we we've done so many. I feel like. It, I don't. I, I kind of lost count of how many we did, um, but yeah, and I appreciate that. And and for me, it's important to kind of hold those relationships. Like, you know, you you contact me, you need something from me, I'm gonna do it, right? Well, that, that feels like wellness, though, right? Like, yes. if there's yes. only like ten people in your Rolodex who will show up no matter what you text, mm -hmm. then like show up for them, they'll show up for you, and then the wellness is knowing like I got ten people. Right. Exactly. exactly. Like and the wellness part of it too is knowing who not to show up for. Uh and, and, yeah. and I mean that in the sense of like I like I again I get a lot of phone calls, whether it's asking for money or asking for support or asking volunteer or all of this and and you know, be before and it, it's a lot of learning, but before I would be more like, oh well. No, I got to help them out. Oh, this is important. I got to help with this. I got to help with this. But after a while, you start realizing and you start seeing, okay, well, who's really making the the real impacts and who is really um, doing what they preach? Um, and, and, and it is very, very liberating uh, <laughs> to say no. Uh, it's been very interesting because I'm not a no person. Uh, and people are a little more surprised. I think the last couple of years, especially especially after COVID, um, when people have asked me certain stuff and I say no, and they're kind of taken uh, take, taken back a bit because they've never heard that from me. But you start really prioritizing like, is this the best thing, the best use of my time? Um, and also in some cases, is this good for my mental health as well? Well, I adore you and I appreciate you. I adore and you. <laughs> I live near, I live in the sunset, just on the other side of that park you like to walk through. <laughs> yeah. so, text me. We got to do, do an Academy of Science. That would be fun. We can, we can take the little ones. Absolutely. Um, if people want to reach out and connect with you, what's what's the best way for them to do that? Um. I feel like these days, probably social media might be a little bit better than emails. I have been trying to limit emails just in general. Uh, I've been trying to get out of that. Um, I'm happy to share my email, but um, one way is, um, you know, through Instagram. I do have a private account. So if you just message me and I'll add you, I just, you know, I, I do like to be able to just know who I'm adding. Um, but it's Sophia underscore A underscore SF. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn, Sophia Andari, S-O-P-H-I-A. 
um, A-N-D-A-R-Y. I don't think there's another Sophia Andari, so that one should be easy. Um, yeah, I mean, if uh, does it help to give an email? I don't know, Meg. What yeah, I'll put the links to all your socials, and then people can yeah. reach out if they want to. And That's also, um, knowing that your wellness is saying no, maybe you won't want to do what they reach out for, but maybe you will. <laughs> I think that's one of the reasons that uh, it's uh, with, with the emails. Um, and then I, I'm not somebody that doesn't like to respond. Um, so even if it's something that, you know, somebody asks me, um, if I'm able to send them to somebody, I'm, I usually will do that. I'll be like, oh, let me recommend this person. They would be better. Um, as long as the messages are polite, because I've been receiving some very, very, very rude things, especially because of my activism. Um, yeah. yeah. And my, my, my pro Palestinian stance, uh, I've been receiving yeah. some stuff. Um, but again, that's why emails sometimes can be triggering. So I'll open the email. I'm like, I really want to respond to this, but no, just delete it. I mean, honestly, sometimes it's not even worth it. Um, yeah. but if people, you know, I'm, um, you know, I, I think you're the exact same way is when yeah. it comes to mentorship, I'm happy to support, especially yeah. the youth. Um, I'm more willing to give my time to the youth than adults. I'm going to be real. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to listen to our conversation. I hope that it inspired you to use your resilience or the rugged spaces where maybe life has made you a bit scrappy or left your knees scraped up. May this conversation encourage you to speak out, particularly on behalf of others who might not have a voice in the world. And may this conversation help you to be someone who is actively working for there to be true peace for all people in this world. If you are interested in supporting additional conversations like these, I hope you'll like and subscribe and do all of the things that people do when they uh, want to continue hearing from podcasts. And if you are really interested in supporting this work and making sure it can happen in the future, please consider supporting me and this work through Patreon. I so appreciate you are tuning in and listening, and I hope that you will take some time to care for yourself. Do what you can to support others, and if you've got a little extra, do something that is completely frivolous fabulous and helping the world be a bit more well. And if you do none of those things and you just listen to a different podcast, that's okay too. All shall be well. Take care.